Hello, BAME Farm fans. We're going to have a quick little instructional video now that No Shave, No Plant 19 is over. So we're looking at, we're going to have a gravity wagon. we got wrenches here, so something's not correct. Now what do we see? We have this newer tire. This tire is almost bold, and then if we look at the Bruck back of Brad's 350, what do we see? Yeah, we got a tire with cords showing. So why'd that happen? Well, I mean, he hasn't run it a million miles. Maybe almost between going back and forth from his house to here. Uh, now, I don't know if the camera's gonna show this off, but try to look at both tires, and what do you see? I could pick this out, and I think Brad could kind of see it. This is also Brad's wagon. He's grinding pig feet, if you can hear the grinder in the background. The two front tires look like they're a little splayed out. Hopefully you can see that. The fisheye lens probably doesn't help me out. So we're gonna we're gonna show off a measurement here how you do this. You're supposed to have your front two tires on your on your wagons straight or no more than one quarter inch towed in. And the thought behind the being towed in is the fact that because of how the pivot point is here and your tires away from it, the tire will naturally want to twist backwards. So if you're a quarter in, it should be even when everything compresses. Yes, I've cheated and I've already taken that apart. And I've done some adjusting, but I haven't moved the tire any. Now, this may not be correct, but I want to be consistent. So we measured already but I'm showing off that we measured from there on the rim instead of on the rubber, went from rim to rim at this point. And the number you get does not matter. The point is you're trying to get the same number on the front side as measuring across the back side. And the number we got, the difference was about three quarters of an inch. So the tires are three quarter of an inch wide three quarters of an inch sounds small um, until you're traveling a number of miles down the road and your tire wears out and then well he it went flat he blew a tire so uh, while Brad is grinding I'm gonna try to get this fixed for him I've already made that much adjustment I measured and both sides here on this clevis are equally out of adjustment I set the tongue of the wagon straight as best as I could eyeball. That doesn't help that the tools are in the way. So we can look down the center pipe. But standing out here and looking straight, accounting for however much play there is in the hitch itself, that's pretty close. Hey Charlotte, we doing it right? So we're gonna we're gonna make a few turns on each side. We're gonna measure again. Um, WD-40 was a big help. This hasn't been adjusted in a while. In fact, this is a B-Line Equipment running gear. Haven't heard of them. It's from somewhere in Nebraska. Hey, haven't seen one of these around here. Now, there's no adjustment in the center. The rods are welded to the whole piece. And the other side we've yet to get apart. It went fairly smooth, even though it looks really rusty. Um, this particular running gear needs an inch and a quarter. I used a pipe wrench for this. Uh, the neat thing, I guess, I don't know that neat, but I, I guess it's, I'm glad they did thought of this. They put a bushing in the hole. Instead of just having a hole drilled, they put a bushing in a greaser. They tried. It's not quite a ball and socket joint like the Kill Brothers gears. Uh, but this company tried. They, it's, Brad's got down the road multiple times. But hopefully we're going to make it so the tires last longer. So let's uh, push this tire out and take the other side apart. fun part will be getting our tire adjusted out. There's no weight in the wagon. With a little bit of kicking, we can get our hole lined up and slide our bolt in. We'll go take the other side apart. Hopefully this goes well. The worst part was right here. I did put WD-40 on it, but we have our power tools to make things turn a little bit better. It would be supremely convenient 
if we didn't have to take the clevis off the end. But we can't have everything perfect. Um, which is probably good that we don't have to, that we have to take the clevis off because this pipe could then possibly work its way loose if the center was made similarly. It's gonna be loud. Let's see if the WD-40 did its job. We're in reverse. Oh, it did its job. Hmm, that's stuck in there. Never fear. There's a bushing. This side's even easier to undo than the other side. Come out of there, nut. I just hate when your nuts get stuck. Socket. Now, on the other side, this was really fun. I did cheat before. And because of the rust, these are a very tight inch and a quarter. I will not use the next larger wrench that's a little too big because that is a good way to splay the tips of your wrench. I should have left that nut in here also. They're just doing everything wrong, aren't they? Come on, Bushing. Yes, we should have. Gotten this loose first. Once we get the wrench on... Ooh, come on, Rust. Let's see if I feel strong today to pull this up. Or bust a knuckle. Okay, they made these have correct threads. Just making sure, because the other side I was able to use my foot. But that I also had better positioning. You know what? If we turn the tongue, we could move this out from underneath the wagon. Good thing I left these all connected. This would be hard. Easier access. I felt strong enough. Rust didn't slow us down. All we need is a little bit so we're not bound at the bottom. And we need to make both of these longer. So we're going to turn the clevis the opposite way. Do not lose your bushing. Oh yeah, that rust looks ugly, but apparently it's not too bad. I don't think. It's going to prove me wrong. I just wonder whoever owned this wagon before Brad, how many times they had to re replace tires because they wore them smooth from the being towed out. I think I said it before, you want them about a quarter inch in on the front at most. I want to take them a few turns out. We're gonna make sure we do this evenly. So we count one, two, three threads right there. I should have counted the number of turns, but after about two, I get lost. Is it that convenient? And we come in here and we see two and a half. So we went a little, little long on this side. We could either take it back or take the other side out. I'd hazard a guess on taking the other side out more. And to make this easier, we'll swing our tongue a little bit. Boil, bolt is in. I'm, I'm gonna give the side another turn, and then we'll measure and see how we did. Eyeballing it. They're a little bit more believably straight. This tire looks like it might, they might be, the tops might lean in. There's not much to adjust easily without checking these bushings out, which based on this hammering mushroomed look to the metal down here, they've been pounded out once. So we're gonna give this side that extra half turn and then we'll measure. If you can see what I see, the tires are more believably 
straight and true forward. I have yet to measure. This could be interesting by myself. Now this side looks like either the back end sits dog leg or this one tire could be too far in. It's pure eyeballery. Let's see if our measurement changes any. We are now at 62 inches, so we brought the front together a half an inch. Now let's see if I can do the back by myself. This could be interesting. There's a lot of stuff in the way back here. Ooh, frame everything. And tie rod ends. You can see that we're hitting the rim and bouncing off a bit. Okay, we're touching. We are 62 and 3 sixteenths. So we are a little less than a quarter inch together on the front. The toe in is correct. Now the question is whether we have them set straight to the back, but at least they shouldn't wear crooked. That's really simple. Not that everybody has a beeline wagon sitting around, but most wagons are fairly similar. Um, we got a, I got a Kilbros over here. This wagon is here to be filled. This is not our wagon. This is a neighbor's wagon. But the Kilbros is a similar, let's say, concept. One of there's got to be a jam nut, but this is threads, and there's threads on the ball and socket joint here. And you turn the pipe to lengthen or shorten it. I like that style much better. If we look from the back, you know what? That's why they look different. There's different rims. The inset of the dish here, two and a half inches. I'm willing to... That one is three plus for the inset of the dish on the rim. Granted, there's a color difference but I can see the difference. How far set back they are. They're both the same size tire. So that's why this tire looks like it sticks out farther and gives the illusion that it may be towed in more. And because this rim just sits farther away, or makes the tire farther away from the running gear. And we got that little mystery figured out. Now, unfortunately, the spare we have is 15 versus 14. It's a little narrower, so that's gonna be hard to tell. But just by eyeballing it and measuring it, we are correct. Now to tighten it up, put the nut on the bottom, jam the jam nut tight. You can imagine how that goes. This has been a quick educational video. Remember, keep your toe in to a quarter inch or less and your front and back measurements. Well, we'll catch you guys later with more fun farming adventures.